partners in Wings to Fly, all the invited guests, principals, students, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning again. So as you have already heard, I'm here to represent the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, who could have wished to be here this morning, but due to other pressing issues, was not able to be here with you. Initially, the program which he has to address this morning was scheduled for this afternoon, but unfortunately, we got some message that that has to be done this morning and therefore could not be with you. As you are aware, we in the Ministry of Education, we are undergoing reforms and we are presenting the bills before the parliamentary group this morning, which has to be led by the permanent secretary and the Minister for Education. And that's why he saw it fit that I come here to relay his message, which he had prepared for you this morning. As you have heard, I'm one of the directors in the Ministry of Education. We have five directorates. One is the Directorate of Basic Education, we have the Directorate of Secondary Education, whose director was here yesterday. We also have the Directorate of Quality uh, Standards, and we also have the Directorate of Policy, Planning, and East African Community Affairs. And finally, the fifth, which is the Directorate of Adult and Continuing Education. So what that means is that we in the Ministry of Education, we handle educational matters right from ECD, as you are aware, through primary, secondary, adults, and university education. So Kenya was among the first three countries to hold that holistic uh, presentation of educational matters, whereby in 2008, the ministry impressed the Directorate of Adult Youths into its mainstream Ministry of Education. So that's who we are in the ministry, and that's why I'm here today. So I will take you through the presentation of the Permanent Secretary, and as you have heard, you will have a session to present or ask your questions, and from that, we have a panel who will address the same to you. So the presentation of the Permanent Secretary reads, preparing for the right career, the place of science and technology. So this presentation was prepared by the permanent secretary who is none other than Professor George Godia, who also happens to have been my lecturer in this very university, though at that time we did not have this uh, particular amphitheater, but he saw it there for fit to send his own student to come and talk to you and deliver the message. So as the background to this information, we are saying that the importance of science and technology in national development cannot be overemphasized. When we look at the developed nations, nations like America, Germany, France, they have all come up because of science and technological inventions, which have now rated them as the world powers. 
Science and technology, therefore, has revolutionized society as a whole, and its effects are never ending. So it's no wonder that even in our school systems, we are emphasizing that students must have positive attitudes towards the learning of the science subjects. The 13th century, therefore, marks the modern world where amazing inventions in science and technology have taken place. So which are some of these areas which we need to point out for you to realize the importance of science and technology? Let's first start by the area of transport. If you look at the infrastructure in society, this has grown with the help of science and technology. We need not go very far to look at issues of transport. We don't want to go to America to see the, develop, uh, the, the development of roads and railways. We just want to look at where the roads or the roads you use to come here. The thicker road, for example, those who have not been here, if you, when we were in Tanzania and they were looking at it, they said, hey, is this in Africa? Not even to mention, is it in East Africa? Is this one of our partners? And then they say, no. If you want Kuenda Uingereza, you need not go to UK. Those are the Tanzanians. They say, just go to Kenya. You will see Uingereza. And that's simply because of what science and technology has done when you look at the development of our highways one of them just where you came through the thicker road. Most of transport like electronic railway lines are realized, and this is actually the benefit society is getting through the means of transport. If you look at the aircraft, it's a modern transport machine through which we can move to the ends of the world just in a few seconds to the area of computer technology. The creation of computers has helped us to leverage ourselves by gaining valuable information that we can use to enrich our lives. With today, you can walk around the whole world in about 80 minutes by just clicking on the computer mouse on the internet. Satellites and radio communication have changed and have entertainment industry all over. So today, as you know, through the computer, we now use computers in teaching. For the first time, the Kenya Institute of Education has developed the digital content so that you even need not have teachers in your classes. If you have your computers, you are able to fill in, feed them with the softwares, and you are able to learn without the teachers. So if you have that gadget in your homes, in your dormitories, in your homes, you are able to access what those in schools can do with ease. Also, we have educational CDs, which are now available everywhere. As I've already mentioned, lectures and les lessons can be uploaded on websites, making information more easily accessible. We now have distance education, federal university, online degrees, that you need not go or look for a university, but through distance education, you are able to learn like any other. It only needs a disciplined mind that you adhere to what is required, you adhere to the content, you adhere to all that pertains to what makes you go through that education system. And therefore, you can do it anywhere through distance education. 
The other area is the area of health care. In the past, you have realized people have been dying because of diseases like diarrhea, cholera, fever, leprosy, among others. But today, these diseases are able to be cured through the use of science and technology just by being given a bill and you are through. The disease is gone. Procedures from scanning to complex therapies are made easy through the use of technology. Genetic research, for example, has revealed how hereditary diseases are transferred across generations, making it possible to manage these diseases. What about our own lives with science and technology? The discovery of electricity, for example, has driven away darkness from the world and lit all over, making all corners of the world to have light. The domestic calls, for example, have been lightened by the introduction of washing machines and even dishwashers in the homes. So you can see where we are moving to, that you really need not have even the house helps so long as you have somebody who can operate those machines, you are able to have all your work done, all thank science and technology. Complex processes are accomplished with the automation, which brings about efficiency and speed. Further still, we find that the world of fashion, from the well put together leather bags, makeups, and shoes that we buried around. All that comes as a result of technology. In clothing, for example, there is so much variety and more comfort with different clothes for different occasions and different seasons. The fancy automobiles that we drive and office furniture to meet the expectations of any high executive in the operation, among other additions. In business, for example, the businesses are growing and expanding across countries owing to technological advancements and the spreading of their wings. Complex industrial processes and large-scale production of goods are possible through technology. At our workplaces, in terms of productivity, Organizations these days need not to follow employees manually to record their presences or what they are achieving in their work in terms of save and checking on punctuality and the transactions of processes. We only need a click. We need a software which we install and that software you just click from your, where you are seated and will tell you what's happening say at the gate. Are, did the people report on time? What is happening in the library? So you need not to walk around. You just click, the software will tell you who is where, what time did they clock in, what time are they going to leave, and how much work have they done, where is a certain transaction. So technology has really made even our workplaces to be conducive places where we can work. We also no longer need the cumbersome calculations. People say, oh, I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not an accountant. I cannot do certain transactions in mathematics. But through the use of software, we are now able to carry on very complex calculations without necessarily being a mathematician or being an accountant. What do we have to say? What has Fission 2030 got to say as far as science and technology is concerned? As you are all aware, our blueprint in development is now the Fission 2030. So this started from 2008 and will go all the way to the year 2030. So as far as this blueprint is concerned, it aims at transforming Kenya into, I quote, 
a middle income country providing a high quality life to all its citizens by the year 2030 based on the economic, the social, and political pillars. And this blueprint, Vision 2030, goes ahead to emphasize that these three pillars, that is the political, the social, and the economic, will be achieved through the provision of education. And this, of course, then you realize is why you are here, that it's only through education that we shall be able to achieve Vision 2030, and as its main emphasis will be through technological innovations. Science, technology, and innovation are therefore key in raising productivity and efficiency levels across the three pillars. When we come to our new constitution, which was promulgated in 2010, 2011, August 27th, where we are heading to, in its fourth schedule sets out the state's obligations in the development of science and the technology test uh, technology sector. In Article 11 of the Constitution, it obligates the state, one, to recognize the role of science and indigenous technologies in the development of the nation, and the two, to promote the intellectual property rights of all people in Kenya. However, as we emphasize the role of science and technology, it's not without its own challenges. One of its challenges is the fact that although research has been undertaken, the impact at the local level remains very weak as most of the research is externally funded. In other words, we are saying we have not put enough resources into the research sector. Two, we also recognize that employment of techni technically qualified personnel remains very low by international standards. We have many aspects as to why this happens, and at times, even those that we produce, we end up losing them immediately we produce them, what we call the brain drain. So those intellectuals whom we produce do not live to assist this country. And then we also note as an, uh, a challenge the insufficient linkages between the various categories of farms, that is the small farms and the big farms, and also the weak linkages between industry and academics in terms of what is it that the industry requires, what is it that we offer in our educational system to provide those links. In order to meet some of these challenges of science and technology, we therefore require a system and proactive research approaches to address innovation dynamism to encourage access, use, equity in the generation of knowledge. We also need to focus on a diversified and competitive manufacturing, local production, regional market expansion, and global markets. Of course, you have realized this through uh, cooperation like what we have in the East African community at our local level, we have at international level things like the European Union. So those are areas that we need to focus on in order to address some of our challenges. We also need to have a pool of relevant and adequate skills and translating these skills into productive competencies. And then finally, we need to strengthen public-private partnerships for technical assistance, capacity building, and funding. So you will see, even in our education system, we, need, we not only have public schools, we also have private schools in order to realize that linkage 
between the public and private uh, partnership in the provision of education. So to come to why we are here in terms of the best career choices, then these are some of the following best career to place the student on a competitive age at the national and international levels. One of these areas include telecommunication, electronics, and computers, that is the tech manufacturing technologies. The other area of career choice is the software development technologies to support innovations such as I hope most of you are familiar with the M-Pesa and Ushahidi. So these are innovations which have even been done by our own local students, personnel in the middle level colleges, not even at the university level. Then the other area we need also to focus on is the infrastructure technology for development of key infrastructure like what we know of the CONSA technology city. When you look at what's envisaged in that kind of technology, then you can truly see what technology can do. Other areas we need to focus on as students is the automobile uh, manufacturing technologies, whereby Kenya needs to identify and develop its need in the automobile uh, global industry. You have seen in most of our colleges, like in the polytechnics, we have tried, students are trying in this automobile uh, industry with some success. So we are saying in this 21st century, the, you are the people who should assist in the development of these technologies. Then we have the satellite and space technologies to help in providing early warning systems, accurate and timely weather forecasts, security, disaster management, and resource mapping. So these are areas which, as you start your Form 1, as you start from your primary level, that you need to train your mind to start focusing into those areas. Nuclear energy for safe exploitation and management of hydro and geothermal energies. So you need to focus in these areas right from the very beginning. We also have health technologies to facilitate the adoption of appropriate processes and technologies for a healthy and productive population. However, as we do this, we are not saying that we overemphasize on the sciences at the expense of the humanities or the art subjects. We are also saying that you as students, you need to be encouraged to undertake the art-based subjects like history, literature, anthropology, religious studies for the promotion of ethical, cultural, and aesthetic values. Because as a science student, for example, if you don't have the ethics, then you are also not a complete student. You need to have the ethical values. That's why we emphasize on a disciplined student so that as you pursue your careers, you also do not throw away your ethics. Even in our present constitution, chapter six emphasizes on matters of integrity, matters of ethical values that as a good citizen, as a good official officers, as good teachers, as good students, we must emphasize ethics at all uh, levels of government. So as a government, therefore, and the ministry, the Ministry of Education has, draft, uh, has developed the draft policies and bills to address science and technological needs of the country. And among these bills, we have the Policy Framework for Education and Training, 2012. We also have the Basic Education Bill, 2012. Science, Technology, and Innovation Policy, 2012. Science, Technology, and Innovation Bill, the Universities Bill 2012, 
So all those is what the, our permanent uh, secretary and the minister are presenting before the parliamentary committee today. And if they sail through, then we are sure that we shall have a nation focusing on the needs of what the Kenyans need for development. So in conclusion, therefore, I wish to thank the Equity Group and the MasterCard Foundation for providing secondary school scholarships to needy and bright students through the Wings to Fly program. The program is unique in that it's not only providing economically disadvantaged students with tuition, books, uniforms, and stipends, but also opportunity for leadership development, career guidance, and mentoring. During the celebrations of the program in Nairobi in February 1st, 2012, his Excellency the President said that the program will help us achieve Fission 2030 goals of economic growth and social development. Rita Roy, the President and CEO of the MasterCard Foundation, and James Mwangi, our CEO of Equity Bank and Chairman of the Equity Group Foundation, lauded the program for enabling Kenyans to complete their secondary education and therefore enhancing their future prospects. To quote what Dr. James Mwang, the CEO of Equity Bank and Chairman of the Equity Group Foundation said, all young people deserve the opportunity to learn and providing these students with a secondary education will ultimately translate into a nation that is economically more dynamic, resourceful, and inventive, end of quote. The Wings to Fly initiative that began in 2010 has grown from $50 million to about $67 million with the support of additional partners, including the USAID and UK aid, and will benefit nearly 7,300 3, students.
So this is the same person at form four level could not do mathematics, but after we were talked to, to realize what was the importance of our career development in the future, then I improved my nine in uh, mathematics at that time to a six to enable me get my division one. And that's what I did. And when I came to university at a later after my first degree, I was able to be among the top in statistics, which involves mathematics. What we are